Today I'm excited to, uh, to be preaching and teaching a message that um, has been on my heart for many, many, many weeks now, and it's going to be a perfect uh, kind of ribbon and wrap up to our Lord's Prayer message series called Prophetic Prayers, Prophetic Prayers. And I want to begin by, uh, by asking and of course answering some questions because when you talk about prophetic prayers, there's, there's probably going to be some, some curiosity as to what that is and what those are. So I want to begin just by simply asking and answering a simple question, and that is this, what is prophecy? Uh, we hear a lot in the church about prophecy. We read uh, books in the Old Testament specifically that were written by prophets. Well, what is prophecy? Prophecy is a message forthtelling future events. Okay? Uh, prophecy is a message forthtelling future events. Prophecy is not fortune telling. All right? Please do not, uh, do not confuse the two. Uh, prophecy is not fortune telling, it's forthtelling. Uh, future events as as we are being led and directed by the Holy Spirit. Okay, fortune telling, and there are lots of fortune tellers, right? Fortune tellers, they're uh, they're they're prophesying, they're fortune telling, as they're being led and directed by evil spirits, and it's very dangerous. You don't ever want to go to a fortune teller. Don't ever do that because you're talking to demons. You're talking to the e the dark side. Okay. But prophecy is, is foretelling future events as they're being shared by the Holy Spirit. All right? So that's good, that's good stuff. That's good news. Um, in addition to that, prophecy, uh, just some subpoints, isn't about where we are, but about where we're going. Isn't that good news? It's not just about where we are, but where we're going. Uh, some people here uh, are going on vacation, all right, to the Grand Canyon. The last name's Brownings. All right, so 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 they could say to one another, "Hey, we're going to the Grand Canyon." What are they doing? They're prophesying about their future, about a future events. They're not talking about where they're at. They're in Bloomington right now, but next week, where are they going to be? They're going to be in the Grand Canyon. So what is that? That's just that's that's just not. It's not telling a lie. That's just forth telling future events, right? So prophecy isn't about where we're at and the condition, whatever it is, but about where we're going. It's not about our present, but about our future. Did you catch that? All right. It's also, prophecy is the bridge between our today and tomorrow, all right? Prophecy is the bridge between our today and tomorrow. So you want to go somewhere tomorrow, you got to build a bridge. Build a bridge today so that you can get into your tomorrow. Prophecy is the bridge between our current condition and our future condition. And we're going to see this uh, work out here today in today's message. It's also the bridge between our present position and our future position, right? Yeah, you might be mopping floors for the company today, but you've got a vision. You've got a future uh, uh, that you're going to be, what, one day maybe running the business, right? But your current condition, your, your current position might be sweeping the floors. But there's something within you that says, hey, someday I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run the business. I'm going to own the business, right? That's talking about your future condition, your future position. And prophecy builds the bridge between today and your tomorrow, your present and your future. So that's what prophecy is. It's foretelling future events. So what is a prophet? If that's what prophecy is, a prophet, notice, is a person who foretells future events. All right, now there's, of course, biblical prophets, but every single one of us can be a prophet that speaks foretelling future events, specifically for your life, as we're going to see that here today. Now, of course, the Lord calls people sometimes to be in the office of the prophet, and that's wonderful, but all of us... Uh, as we'll see here today, are prophets foretelling future events, okay? That's, that's good news. Second Chronicles 2020 says this, Believe in the Lord your God, and you'll be established. Believe His prophets, and you'll prosper. Do you see that? Believe what the prophets are saying, and according to believing and following that word, then prosperity enters in, into our lives. Now, by believing the Lord, we're established in the faith. We're grounded. We're rooted, right? 
uh, we have the blessed assurance of our salvation. But so many people are saved and going to heaven, thank God for that, but they're not prospering. They're not prospering. Why? Because they're not listening to the prophets. They're not listening to those who speak the word. What am I doing here today? I'm prophesying. I'm a prophet. What is a prophet? A prophet speaks the word of God. And I'm not the only one. We're all prophets. We all could do this. As we're going to see, I'm just kind of laying the foundation here for us. And as you prophesy, you will prosper. Deuteronomy 18:18. 18, 18, God said to Moses, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. And here it is. And I will put my words in his mouth. So what does a prophet of God speak? The words of God. Not his own words, the words of God. What does a fortune teller speak? The words of, of, of the enemy, right? Yeah, that's all they're doing. Or, or at best, their own words, right? Their own, you know, they're just going to make stuff up. You know, <laughs> charlatans. What are they speaking? They're just speaking their own words, speaking whatever comes to their, comes to their soul. But a spirit, by, we prophesy by our spirit as we're led by the Holy Spirit, the words of God. 1 Timothy 1, verse 18 and 19, the Apostle Paul wrote to his young pupil, and boy, I like that name. Timothy, Timothy right? Yeah, yeah, I like, I like Timothy. One of my favorite characters in the Bible. All right? He says, Timothy, my son. This is the Apostle Paul writing to his young apprentice, right? Pastor Timothy. I am giving you this command in keeping, watch this now, with the prophecies once made about you. So there was a time in Timothy's life, earlier in his life, probably as a young teenager, there were prophetic words, prophecies spoken over him. And we're going to see this here in the message today, especially parents and pastors. We can speak words of prophecy over our children, over our grandchildren that will come to pass. Watch this now, for the good or for the bad. You can bless your children, you can curse your children. I'm serious. This is where this is going. I'm feeling the Holy Spirit already, people. This is good. This is good. I'm just introduced, introduction now. All right, so I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you. Now watch this. So that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. In other words, when we, when we prophesy over our children and grandchildren, over our, ourselves, over our spouses, you know what we do? They, we hold on to those prophecies that were made about us so that we can recall them. We can recall them in the future, specific, specifically when you're going through a fight, when you're going through a battle, when you're going through a dark time. You know, sometimes, in other words, how this looks like, sometimes when you feel like you're going under, when you feel like you're losing in life, you need to be reminded that, that, that God has spoken over you what? Not defeat, but victory. Amen. Not loss, but gain. Not poverty, but prosperity. Do you, do you see this thing? So he says, now, Timothy, these prophecies were made. Let's just use, let's just use an age. Let's say he was 15 when the prophecies were made. Let's say he's, he's 30 now. So he says, okay, I'm 30 now, but I can remember when something good was said about me and to me when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And I go back there with the arms of faith, and I hold on to that in my present, mm -hmm. right? And it propels me, it grounds me for my, not just my present, but for my future. This is powerful stuff. This is powerful stuff. And it's, and it's new. It's deep stuff that most, uh, most of us have never heard about, and I understand that. So, so we can fight the battle well. Watch this now. Holding on to the faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected, and so have shipwrecked, suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. So in other words, they've let go, right? Something good could have been said about you, like Timothy say, age of 15, and if you don't hold on to that, if you don't hold on to that word from the Lord, and you let it go, what, what happens in our present when the battle comes? Well, you shake, rattle, and roll, right? Instead of being grounded and founded in, in, on the faith, uh, the solid rock foundation of faith. It, it's, the, it's, the, it's the prophecies, it's the Word of God that we cling to, right? Uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, in the faith. All right. So what are prophetic prayers? That's what prophecy is. That's what a prophet is. What are prophetic prayers? Prophetic prayers are prayers which foretell future events. Write that down. They're prayers that foretell future events. In other words, prophetic prayers decree and declare, not my word, not USA Today, not Wall Street, right? What? The Word of God, 
we decree and declare the Word of God prophetically over what? Over our lives, over our families, over our children, over our grandchildren. We prophetically proclaim the Word of God over our church. We can prophetically proclaim the Word of God over America. Amen. Amen. Boy, we need to probably do that today before we leave today. Boy, America needs help. America needs God, right? Amen. Amen. So that's what prophetic prayers do. We're talking about prayer. Prayer is talking to God, but we're speaking the Word of God, not just to, uh, to ourselves, but to the Lord and to our situations. This is so good. Let's just look at some examples, and then we're going we're gonna to dive deep into, into this, uh, this message again. Extremely practical. I'm going to give you some, some tools on how we do this in our lives as uh, Christian believers. Amen? Matthew 21, 21. If you study the teachings of Jesus, he, he was really teaching people how to pray prophetically and how to speak prophetically, all right? Now, uh, quick lesson, quick lesson. Uh, this isn't up on the screen, so let me just kind of take a side. Can I take a quick detour? Will you give me 60 seconds of detour and kind of come back to this? If you read Genesis 1 and 2, first two chapters in the Bible, in the, in the account where God created the world, everything in it. Um, his hands didn't do anything. He spoke. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be land, and there was land, right? Let there be vegetation, there was vegetation. So there's creative power in our words. And, and then God looked at all that he had done through his words, and he said, it's good, right? The only time he got his hands dirty was what? When he formed Adam out of the dust of the ground. That was it. Other than that, he was just speaking stuff, right? So there's power in our words, and there's power in the spoken word of God to, to affect things in the earth. Does this make sense? Yeah. Now, what we, and he gave that same power to Adam and Eve. All right, he said, now rule, rule, rule the earth and everything in it, manage it, take care of it. It wasn't until after the fall that, that things started to get wacky, all right? And, and now we have to what? We have to labor and work with our hands to get stuff done. But now that Jesus, what, redeemed us from the curse that Adam and, brought, and Eve brought into us, when, now the power's restored to what? To our voice, to our words. And we're living in that new covenant. We're living in that new dispensation to where we can speak some things and, they, and we'll see them happen in the earth just like God saw them in the, uh, in, the, in, in the beginning, all right? All right, that being said, let's read Matthew 21, 21. Jesus is in the earth, and what's Jesus doing? He's just teaching his disciples how to live and operate, right, in the kingdom of God, how, how God rules the world and how God wants us to rule our world. So knowing that, this will make sense. So Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what has been done to this fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, quote, go throw yourself into the sea, and it'll be done. Now, the context of Matthew 21, of course, Jesus and his disciples are walking along, I think headed to Jerusalem. And there's a fig tree, right? Beautiful fig tree, leaves. And they're kind of hungry. They're wanting an afternoon snack, you know. They don't have Dairy Queen. So, uh, so, so he's, he sees the fig tree. He walks over, you know, going, going to pull some figs off the fig tree, right, and get a little snack on his way to Jerusalem. There's no figs on the tree. Not a fig tree, not a fig on the tree. Just leaves. In other words, there's no fruit, right? There's no produce of the life that should be, should be evidence in the tree. And Jesus spoke to the tree, right? He said, curse be you, and you're never going to bear fruit again. You know, he, and he speaks death to the tree. All right? I think it's the next day they're walking back by the tree and it's dried up. There's not a leaf on it. Uh, it's just all twigs. <laughs> you know, it's all limbs. And the disciples are like, whoa! Holy cow! He spoke to the fig tree and it dried up. And he says, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what's been done to the fig tree, but you can say to this mountain, what? Go throw yourself into the sea. Go throw yourself into the ocean, and it'll be done. Is this really about, you know, taking Mount Everest and relocating it? No. This is a lesson on the power of your words, a power of, of, of prophetically saying something and having it done, having it accomplished 
in our lives. Mark 11 picks up this teaching in, in, a, in a different light. Verses 20 through, 22 through 24, Jesus says again to His disciples, have faith in God. Notice all this stuff is, is rooted and grounded in faith. you got to believe it. you got to believe it that, that you've got the power. Somebody say, I have the power. I've got the power through Jesus. If I have faith in God, have faith in God, for surely I say to you, now, I don't know if you've got the notes on this, but if you've got a pen or pencil, circle the word say every time, every time, in, this, every time this, uh, in this scripture. Have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he, here it is, says will be done. He will have whatever he thinks. No, he'll have whatever he says. Are you seeing this thing? Therefore, I say to you. Now, when we pray, we say, right? That was the greatest lesson, Revelation on prayer. Okay, now if you've not purchased my book yet on Oracion, get it while it's still here. All right? The greatest revelation God ever gave me about prayer is when you pray, you got to what? You got to say. You got to say. You got to speak. Speak your words. Speak, speak prayer. So I, I say whatever you, whatever you say, you'll have. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you've received them and you will have them. Are you, did you see this? See, whatever we say, whatever we pray, we're going we're gonna to receive. We're going to, we're going to see manifest, not just in our lives, in the lives of those people around us. So we have to watch what we say. Here's how powerful words are. Matthew 12, 37. Jesus said, by your words are you justified, and by your words are you condemned. Let me, let me say it probably how we would say it. If Jesus was alive in 2019, he probably would have said it this way. By your words are you saved, and by your words are you condemned. By, are you seeing this? By your words, right? The words that we say either bless us or curse us. Our words either save us or condemn us. Our words either free us or what? Or, or, or bind us, right? Just by what we say. Now, our words... Our words aren't just lip, lip service, all right? It's not just this little device in our mouths going like this. Our words are the, what's this now? The fruit of what we believe and what we think. I know what you believe, and I don't know what you think by your words. Because I, I, I can't see your thoughts. You can't see what I'm thinking. You can, but, but, okay, you know what I was thinking? Fried chicken really sounds good for lunch. That's what I was just thinking. Fried chicken really sounds good for lunch. But you didn't know that, did you? Because you don't know my thoughts. But now you know my thoughts by what I said. Are you with me? My wife, I go with my wife, look right at her. She looked at me like, what are you doing? And I could be thinking, oh, she's so beautiful. She's so lovely. She's so marvelous. She's so wonderful, isn't she lovely, right? Isn't she wonderful, right? But unless I say it, until I tell her I love her, it's just, a, it's just you know, I, love, oh, do you, I, I do love her. All my heart I love her. I really think I love her. But she doesn't know that until I what? Until I say I love you. She doesn't know I appreciate her. Do I appreciate my wife? Absolutely. She's wonderful. But I have to say, hey, thank you. I appreciate that. I have to say it. I have to say it. So by our words are we justified. By our words are we condemned. Proverbs 18, 21. Oh, this is good. This, is, this cuts right to the chase. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Wow. I mean, this is a whole lesson. I mean, I, we can do a whole series on the power of words, and we probably will sometime again. But by our tongue, what? Our, our, our life and, and death, what? Entered into our lives and the lives of those around us. And you know, we know this already, even intuitively, before I even shared this lesson. You've been around people 
Maybe friends, family members who speak life. They just speak good. They speak, they're positive, right? They're encouragers. They uplift you. You get around, you know, just positive, and they're speaking that. And, 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 you, and we, we feel that. There's, there's, there's power in those words, right? And we've also been around people who what? Who are negative, who are naysayers, who curse everything. I mean, just, it's like doom and gloom, and, and, and boy, you get around, it's like, Ugh. you know, it, you, you start, you start receiving death. Does that make sense? What is it? It's all the words. It's all the words of one versus the other. That's all it is. That's all. And we've all worked with people. We've lived next to people. We've gone to school with people like that. And, and, and it, that's what this is talking about. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Job 22 verse 28 says, Thou shalt decree a thing. Oh, this is, this is good and, and dangerous at the same time. It shall be established unto thee. Whoo! You mean to tell me, Pastor Tim, that what I say I'm going to receive? Well, not only am I saying that, that's what the Word of God's saying. I'm just preaching the Word. I'm just, I'm just putting it up here on the screen. I'm just reading for what the Word. God said this. Thou shalt decree a thing, or we, and we would say it this way, whatever you say is going to come into your life. It's going to be established in your life. So we have to watch our words. We have to watch what we're saying prophetically because prophetic prayers, what? Decree and declare the Word of God over our life. So here's what I want to do just in the closing moments here this morning. I want to give us four types, and there's, there's more types than these four, but just for the time, time that we have here today. Four types of prophetic prayers that you and I as Christian believers established in God can pray, watch this now, over our lives, over our family, our friends, our relationships, our marriages, our finances, so forth and so on, okay? So these... What I'm giving you here today is just some examples, and then as you're reading the Word of God, as you're studying it, and, and God quickens a, a, a word for you, then you can pray this over your life, pray it over the, your situation. So, so let, let's just start with, with the easiest one. Let's just start with the personal type first, the, the, you know, talking about yourself, praying for yourself. One of my favorite verses, I think Hayden's favorite verse, <clears throat> is Philippians 4.13. And we've all heard it, and I'm going to quote it right now. Philippians 4.13 says this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. One of, one of our favorite verses, right, as a family, many of you know that verse. Maybe it's your favorite verse. So how do we pray prophetic prayers using Philippians 4.13? Here it is. I, d I decree and declare I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It goes from being just a verse in the Bible to being a verse in my life. It leaps off the pages when I pray it. Does that make sense? It, it goes from being uh, just a citation in the Scriptures to being uh, established in my life. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be what? Established unto me. So whatever I decree, it's going to happen in my life. So if I decree and declare, I can't do anything. I'm a loser. I'll never, everybody else is going to win, I'm going down. Everybody else is going over, I'm going under. Then what's going to be established in your life? Defeat? Loss? Depression? Are you seeing how this thing works? Now you can turn it around. If you said those words over your life, stop saying them. And as of this day moving forward, I'm decreeing and declaring what? The Word of God over my life. All right? Instead of saying, oh, you know what? I've applied for that job, and so has 200 other people. I'll never get the job. Somebody else is going to get the job. Somebody else will get promoted. I never get promoted. Then don't be surprised when they reject you. Because whatever you decree and declare is going to be established to you. You have what you say. Kevin and I were talking about this today. We've got to speak victory. Don't speak defeat. Speak victory. Don't speak loss, speak, speak prosperity, right? I, we need to say, I can do what? All things through who? Christ. Through Christ that gives me strength, right? It's Christ in me that gives me strength to do all things. Amen. That's just, that's just one example. Let's use another one, 1 John 4, 4. It says, greater is he who lives within you than he who lives within the world. So prophetic prayer would be an example of this. I decree and I declare today, greater is he who lives within me 
than he who lives within the world. Or we could say, greater is he that lives within me that's coming than the one coming against me. Right? And we can decree and we can declare that over our lives today. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and pray that. Can you just pray those words with me? Let's say it all together. I decree and declare, greater is he who lives within me than he who lives in the world. You feel that thing? Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. That's what, this is what, again, it goes from being a citation to be established in your life. Another one of my favorite scriptures to pray is Romans 8, 31. It says this, if God be for us, who can be against us? So I decree and I declare today, if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. Just take the scriptures and pray them. That's all we're doing. And keep praying them. Keep praying them. Keep praying them. If God be for me, who can be against me? When you're going through a trial, when you're going through a tough time, when all hell's breaking out against you, what do you pray? You pray prophetic prayers. You say, if God be for me, who can be against me? And boy, that word gets inside of you, and what? It's released in your life. The life of God is released into your heart and life. Romans 8, 37, let's go a few verses down in Romans 8. It says this, In all things we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. So here's the prophetic prayer. I decree and I declare today, in all things, I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are you seeing how this thing works? Amen. I decree it and I declare it. Because whatever I decree and declare it is going to be established in my life. I'm more than a conqueror, right? Yeah. See, it's not a matter of gaining the victory. The victory has been won. We're going to talk about that here in April on the cross of Calvary. Jesus defeated the devil. It's not that the devil's going to be defeated. He's already defeated. Amen. He's already got the big L on his forehead, right? The game is over, right? The, the fight is finished. Jesus said that, right? It is finished. That was his last words on the cross. It's done. Pinned, right? We got, we got a martial arts uh, instructor right here. This guy can pin you quicker than you, you know you're pinned, right? And Jesus pinned the devil. Pop. Popped him. So what does that make us? That makes us more than a conqueror. We just what? We just live in that victory. Yeah. We just live in the light of that. Isn't that good news? That's the good news. And we pray it. Pray it over your life, and it'll be established in your life. Here's another one. Isaiah 54, 17. I pray this a lot when I'm going through tough times. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Mm -hmm. So I decree and I declare today, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. None. Whatever that weapon is, whatever the enemy is bringing into my life, whether that's a physical ailment, whether that's emotional, relational, financial, uh, whatever, no weapon of the enemy, no device shall prosper against me in the name of Jesus, right? And we speak that word over us. And it's what? It's established. Jesus said, you know, whatever's done to the fig tree, you can do. You just got to speak to what? Speak to the mountain. Speak to the, to the weapon that's coming against you, and you what? You shall defeat it. Here's a, here's a couple more personal prophecies that we can pray. Psalm 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, you can pray the whole Psalm 23, by the way. This is just a good psalm to pray. But let's just take that first verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I decree and I declare today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In other words, all my wants, all my wishes, all my desires are met by my shepherd. I'm his sheep, and he leads me, what, to green pastures? He leads me beside quiet waters, right? He restores my soul. I, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is the, and the shepherd, think about this now, is the overseer. The, the sheep aren't responsible for their lives. The shepherd's responsible for the sheep. We were, Robert and I were talking about that this past week. He's our, ooh, that's good. He's our overseer. He's the one. What, see, God's, God's got you covered. You're in the flock of God. You're in the fold of the Father. You're, you're, in, you're a part of God's family. You're his son and daughter, right? Just like if someone was going to come and try to hurt one of my children, they got to come through me first. Just like if someone was going to come and, Take, you know, hurt little Tate. I tell you what, Mama Bear right here, she'd come out. It would be just little sweet little Mama, right? 
and then you've got daddy bear, right? Well, we've got a good father in heaven. We're his kids. So when the, the devil comes and picks on us, you know what we need to do? We just to remind, Lord, you're my shepherd. You've you're, you got this covering. It's, the battle's the Lord's, the Bible says, right? It's not mine. See, the sheep never fight the wolf. The sheep never fight the wolf. The shepherd fights the wolf. And the sheep just keep eating grass. Are you with me? So we just need to remind the shepherd, say, Lord, I just decree today, Lord, you're my shepherd. I shall not want. And you know what we probably should say? I shall not worry. I shall not worry. You got this thing covered. I just, sometimes I just need to remind myself that God's in control because I, I give him control, right? Lord, you're my shepherd. Hallelujah. Is this good? How, I knew it would be good. I knew it would be good. Can I give you one more before we transition to point number two? Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all, someone say all, all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So here's our prayer. I decree and I declare today, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. All my needs are met in full. Whatever. Well, pastor, I got this need. It's met. It's covered. You just have to what? You just have to believe it and receive it. Speak it. My God shall supply all my needs. All my needs are met what? In Christ Jesus. Because he's rich. Amen. He's got all the glories of heaven at his disposal. All the treasures of heaven at his disposal. And what are we doing? We're just, we're prophetically speaking the word of God. That's what prophetic prayers do. And we just keep saying it. When you're going through something, just when you, when you have a need in your life, this is one of the verses you got to pull out and you got to keep praying. You keep praying. You could, my God shall supply all my needs. What, what does that mean? God's my source. Watch this now. God's my source. And all the earth is his resource. Amen. See, I don't look to my job to provide my needs. I don't look to my boss, my employer, my 401k. I look to my God. Now, God can use all this other stuff, right? God can use strangers. God can use people you don't even know just to meet a need in your life, bless you, whatever it is, so forth and so on, right? So when you, make, when you look to God then, and not to the world, the things of the world, then God can use the things in the world, right? But boy, the minute we get our eyes off of the, God as our source and we put them on the, the resources, become the source, then we're in error. Then we've turned the resources into idols, right? So my God shall supply all my needs, and he's got all the resources of the earth to do it. I mean, it's just, that's, I mean, so many stories after stories in each of our lives has this happened to. I mean, I, I can't, can't even begin to explain how God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. But all we have to do is decree it and declare it and believe it. Hey, that, that things are ordering and orchestrating in our lives. Now, this is just personal. Let's transition to point number two. With our family, this is important. Joshua 24, 15. Let's talk about how we can pray prophetically over our family, over our children. Now, if you say, well, Pastor Tim, I'm single here today. Hallelujah. All right? Because you're on the front end of this stuff. You can start a family doing this. Right? Get, get, I mean, thank God. Now, if you've got a family, great. Let's just jump in and start right now. Joshua 24, 15. I love Joshua. He, oh, I can't wait to meet Joshua. Him and I are going to sit down for some coffee someday. He said this, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I decree and I declare today, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Right? Well, Pastor Tim, my teenager's going crazy. My, young, my children are going crazy. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You just keep speaking that over your children. Speak that over your family. They might go out for a little bit, but they're going to come back. Can I give you just one example of this? How many of you remember Billy Graham? Remember Billy Graham? One of the greatest men of God in the last century. I mean... More souls have been saved through Billy Graham than any other probably in Christendom, okay? 
Uh, and he had a wonderful wife, wonderful family, but he had a son named Franklin. Franklin said, uh-uh, I, I don't want daddy's religion, I don't want daddy's faith, and Franklin went out in the world. He became the prodigal son. He, he went out, boom. And I guarantee you, Billy Graham and Ruth Graham prayed that, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for Franklin, he's going to serve the Lord. And, and he's out doing all the crazy stuff out in the world. And they kept praying for Franklin. They kept speaking life over Franklin. And you know what? It wasn't a matter of just time, just a matter of years. I don't know how many years, maybe a few decades. He was, he was lost. And Franklin came back to the Lord. And Franklin is serving the Lord today, preaching the Word of God, took over his, his father's ministry. And he's doing crusade evangelism now all over the world. And now Franklin's son, Billy Graham the third or whatever it is, okay, is now preaching the gospel, right? So, you know what? It might not, there's times when, you know, family members and children and cousins and they, they might go, but you keep speaking the Word of God. Don't, don't speak the devil, you know, speak, hey, you know, Junior's going to serve the Lord. Amen. Someday, even while he's serving the devil, he's going to serve the Lord. He's coming back. He's, he's returning. Keep speaking those words of what? Prophecy over your children, and the power of God is released, and, uh, and it'll happen. It'll come to pass. Psalm 115, 14 says this, May the Lord increase you more and more, both you and your children. How do we pray that verse? I decree and I declare today, God is increasing me more and more, both me and my children. Yeah. Did you see this? It's God's will. It's His Word. God wants to bless us. God wants to bless your children. Abounding, right? Because here's the thing. See, we are only, we can only bless others to the degree that we're blessed. For example, uh, let's say I had a million dollars and I wanted to give a million dollars to Kelly today. Well, then I could do it. But if I didn't have a million dollars and I wanted to bless Kelly with a million dollars today, then I can't do it. Do you see this? But if I'm blessed, then I can bless. See, that's why God wants His children blessed, so He can what? Bless others. We're blessed to be a blessing, right? And this goes for, 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 for any area of our lives, and I love this, not just us, but our children, our children. Proverbs 14, 11. The house of the upright will flourish and prosper. What's the prayer? I decree and I declare today, my house is upright, and it will what? It'll flourish, and it'll prosper. Now this, this I mean, I know some of the, some of this might be a little hard going down, but for, 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 for the first time, right? Because you might be looking at your house, and it, it might not be upright. It might be going crazy. It might be falling apart. It might not be flourishing. It might not be prospering. It might be the complete opposite. Watch this now. Remember what I taught you in our introduction? Prophecy doesn't speak about the present. It speaks about the future. Prophecy is the bridge between our present and our future. Are you seeing this thing? So you don't wait to speak it when it's happening. You speak it when it's not happening. In other words, when the kids are going crazy, you say, you know what? My kids are in order. When the kids aren't serving the Lord, what do you say? My kids are serving the Lord. Well, Pastor Tim, that's a lie. No, it's not. It's prophesying. It's speaking the Word of God. My house is upright, and it will flourish, and it will prosper. Right? I'm speaking prophetically. What? The Word of God. These aren't my words. These are God's words. Right? Are you seeing how this thing is? And watch how God, what, begins to snap, crackle, and pop things into, into, into order, into situations in our lives. Well, I don't believe that. Well, then it won't happen. Speak the opposite and watch what you receive. You'll receive the opposite. So here's the thing. You're going to have what you say either way. So why not speak well? Why not, why not speak positive? If what I'm going to have is what I say, then why not just go ahead and try doing it the right way, doing it God's way? I mean, if you want to curse your kids, my kids will never come to the Lord. My kids will never come to church. My kids are going straight to hell. 
Well, then don't be surprised if they never come to the Lord, if they never come to church, and if they go straight to hell. Don't be surprised, honey, because I won't be. God certainly won't be. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. So go ahead and speak well of your children. My children will serve the Lord. They'll love the Lord. Matter of fact, they're going to love coming to church. They're going to love praising and worshiping God. My children are going to love learning about the Lord, right? My children are going to serve the Lord. Just that's prophesying, right, over, over their lives. And it's releasing what? Not the powers of hell over them. It's releasing the power of God over them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we continue? All right. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's great. Proverbs 15, verse 6, talking about family prophecies. The house of the righteous contains great treasure. I decree and I declare today, my house is righteous and contains what? Great treasure. Great treasure. See, God's not trying to keep, keep good stuff, from, keep treasure from us. He's trying to get it to us. He's trying to get it to us. You know what? Here's a, here's a revelation most Christians don't know. They, common sense will tell you this, but most people don't know it. And most, most pastors aren't bold enough to say it, so I'm just going to say it because you know I'm bold. <laughs> it takes money to do ministry. It takes more money to do more ministry. The, 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 the exchange rate in our country is not the exchange rate it was 3,000 years ago with sheep and goats. It's money. You do this for me, I'll do that for you, and I'll pay you to do it. It's finances. That's how. Are you with me? The process of exchange is all financial. So, so we can do more if we what? If we have more. And it takes more money to what? To do more ministry. We can do more what? As we are blessed financially to, to, to fund the gospel. Can I give you an example of our media ministry? We're starting this, but Robert and I have already talked about it in our leadership team. It's our vision as a church, hopefully within the next year, to be on television. I mean, I've been on television for years in other ministries. And, and you know, there's no, there's no local Christian television except for one church. I think it's Grace Presbyterian in Peoria. That's it. And, uh, but you know what? They don't just give you airtime. You have to what? You have to buy it. Well, you've got a vision to be on TV to reach hundreds of thousands of people in just central Illinois, let alone if you get on a Christian television station that's re reaching the whole nation and the world. It just takes just make money. That's all it is. That's it. If you've got the money, they'll put you on. Are you seeing how this thing? But we have to have great treasure. We just can't have a few quarters. <laughs> Go over to WEK. I like to be on, on television, you know, 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Wonderful. And I've got 50 cents to give you. <laughs> they'd laugh at me just like Rosemary. They'd laugh me right out of the studio. Are you with me? And they say, okay, Pastor Tim, wonderful. And I don't know what the airtime is. Let's just say it's a thousand hours or thousand hours. A thousand dollars for 30 minutes. I don't know what it is, but let's just say it's and so, oh, wonderful. Here's six months. And you know what? That's a testimony to the secular media. Because that's how we're going to do it. We're going to pay in the future. We're, going to, we're just going to go They don't have to worry about, you know, does the tab going to pay their bills? No, we're going to pay our bills for six months. Then after that, we'll pay for another six months. And, and we're, going to, we're going to walk in integrity. Why? Because we have great treasure. This house contains what? Great treasure. Great treasure. Are you seeing this thing? And that's vision. So how do we do? We get from our present to our future. By speaking it. By praying it. By prophesying it. See, I just prophesied it over the church now. Will you all be surprised when you go on TV? No, you won't. You won't be. It'll be like, yep, that was Pastor Tim's visions. God gave us the finances to do it. God opened up the door. Praise God. You have what you say. Are you seeing this thing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Oh, my gosh. My time is flying. I am so sorry. Let's get, let's get through type number three. Type number three. Physical. Physical prophecies. Boy, this is, this is so good. What do you do when you're down and out physically? Isaiah 53, 5 says, by his stripes we are healed. So when you get sick, what do you do? You decree and declare today, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm, can I just roll through these real quick? 
Jeremiah 30, 17 says, I will restore you to health and heal all your wounds. I decree and declare today, God, you are restoring my health and you are healing me of all my wounds. You got a wound? God can heal it. You're, 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 you're down and out in health? God can what? Restore it. But you've got to what? You've got to, number one, believe it in your heart. Think it. Speak it. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe God wants to heal you. And then you, and then you keep decreeing and declaring it. Psalm 30, verse 2. Oh, Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. I decree and declare today, God, as I call to you for help, you're going to heal me. See, that right there, that prayer right there, what? God's just waiting for you to call. Mm -hmm. There was an old song growing up, uh, call him up, tell him what you want. I think an old gospel song, right? Just call him up, tell him, just call him up. God, I need you to help me. God, I need you to heal me. You know, sometimes you just feel depressed in life, you know. God, I'm, I need you to just lift this depression off of me. I need you to give me your joy. God, I need your joy today. I called, God, give me your joy today. As I call to you, you'll do it. Do you see how this thing works? Just call, just call. All right, wonderful. Matthew 9, 20 through 21. A woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak and said to herself, if I can touch his cloak, I will be healed. And all we can do is say, I decree and today, if I can touch Jesus, what I will be healed. How do we, are we, Jesus isn't in the earth today as this, you know, where she could go up and touch his clothes. It's the touch of faith, right? As I reach out to Jesus, as I, you know, reach out my faith to Jesus, I'll be healed, right? That's what they're saying. Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. So it's not just physical healing. Look at this. It's emotional. Because sometimes you have a whole body. Your physical body is whole, but your heart's broke. How many of you have ever had a broken heart? Loved somebody and they didn't love you back? Trusted someone, they betrayed your trust, right? Are you with me? I mean, we all suffer from time to time broken hearts. And I love this verse. Boy, I've leaned on this a lot. I decree and clear today, God, you are healing my broken heart and binding up all my wounds. Amen? Sometimes we don't need a physical healing. Sometimes we need an emotional healing. And he's the great healer. He's the great physician. And all we have to do is say, God, I believe today you're healing my broken heart. You're doing surgery right inside, inside of me. Hallelujah. All right. The fourth type is financial. Boy, if people... The two greatest prayer requests we get are physical needs and financial needs, right? So let's, let's conclude with, with the financial. Point number four, Deuteronomy 1.11 says this, May the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times. Woo! And bless you just as he promised. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Imagine your life a thousand times more than it is today. Put a couple, put three zeros at the end of your salary. That's a thousand, are you with me? That's good stuff. That'll put a smile on your face, right? I like that. Just add some zeros. That's what God says. I decree and clearly God is creasing me a thousand times more and blessing me just as he promised. Can you believe God can do that for a church? How many people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifty, sixty. 10, 11, 12, 13, 40, 50, 60. We got 16 people here, 17 counting Pastor Tim. 17,000 people coming to the tab. Oh, God, I don't There's 125,000 live here in Bloomington Normal. Within, uh, what, five miles of here? 125,000 people. 17,000 is nothing. That's not even, that's just over a tithe. Are you seeing this thing? I decree and I declare it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thousand times more. Hallelujah. Are you seeing this? There's churches in Africa, I've told you about it. 500,000 members. Million members. There's a million, million seat sanctuary just got built in Africa. Million seats. They're having revival across the continent of Africa. Like you wouldn't believe. They can't build churches big enough. They have services all day Saturday and all day Sunday, like 20 services just to get the members in. Why can't we have that here? 
right? We got phase two on the other side of that wall. Seats 300 people. Amen? We're, I had the crane right clear today. That's full. Amen. That's full in Jesus' Amen. name. Are you seeing this thing? It's God's will. God wants to reach people, not just in Africa, but in America. Hallelujah. Psalm 90, 17 says, May the favor of the Lord God rest upon us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands for us. I decree and declare today, the favor of the Lord, my God, rests upon me. Boy, that right there is a prayer to pray. I'm the favored child of God. I walk in, I get, I, favor comes to me, and God's establishing my, my, the work of my hands. There's a reason some people are favored and there's a reason some people aren't. The reason that people are favored is they believe they're favored. And the reason that people aren't favored is they don't believe they're favored. They believe they're cursed. We've got to change it. We've got to change it in here first. We've got to change it in our minds. And then we've got to what? We've got to speak it. Right? Yeah. I will get the promotion because I'm the favored child of God. God loves me. God loves me. God would rather have me at that position than a heathen. Now, he loves the heathen, but he doesn't favor the heathen. God loves everybody. God wants everybody to be saved. But there's some favored children. And we're the favored children. We're in the family of God. Now listen to this. I love y'all's kids. But I favor mine. Are you with me? Mine are going to get to eat at my table today. Are you uh, the fried chicken? Are you with me? <laughs> I'm a chicken eating preacher. <laughs> Many doesn't know, but we're having chicken today. Are you with me? Does this make sense? We lo God loves everybody, but He favors what? He favors His own. He doesn't want the heathen to be exalted. He wants the righteous to be exalted. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Where are we at? Psalm 9, 17. All right. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, and He adds no sorrow to it. I decree and declare today, the blessing of the Lord is bringing me wealth. And watch this. And I'll not be sorry for it. I'm not going to apologize for the goodness of my father. My kids never should, should apologize to their friends for how good I am to them. Does that make sense? Nor should, you know, my children's friends have to apologize to our children for how good they are. You don't want to apologize for that. You just, you just thank God for it. Amen. Be blessed. It's such a blessing to be a part of the family of God, right? And we don't have to be ashamed about it. You know what? We should, we should uh, how shall we say this? We should invoke the jealousy of the heathen. The heathen should want what we have. The, the lost should want to be found. The sick should want to be healed. The, those that are going to hell should want to go to heaven. Does that make sense? They should look at the church. They should look at us and go, I want what you have. How can I do that? And you say, well, that's easy. Just come on. Come on in. Invite Jesus into your heart and life, and he'll change you. Does this make sense? We should invoke the jealousy of the heathen. Not be, not be sorry for it. Not be sorry for it. All right, last verse. Psalm 103, 1 through 5. We talked about this in great detail last week, so I'm not going to belabor it. Praise the Lord my soul, all my almost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all my sins, heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from the pit, crowns me with love and compassion, who satisfies my desires with good things, so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. There's a lot in that. I'm closing with this. Here's how we pray this. I decree and I declare today, I will praise the Lord with all my soul and forget not any of his benefits. Here it is. He forgives all my sins. See, we personalize it. He forgives all my sins. He heals all, someone say all, all, all my diseases. He redeems my life from the pit and crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my desires with good things and renews my youth like the eagles. Do you see that? That's how you pray it. You take the Word of God, prophetic prayers what? Take the Word of God and pray the Word of God. Believe it in your heart. Think it in your mind, but speak it. Speak it with your mouth. Because we have what? We say. We say with our mouths. We say with our lips. And, and if you'll just keep saying it, and you'll just keep agreeing with the Lord, you know what? It's just a matter of time. 
That's it. It's just a matter of time before the goodness of the Lord will be, will be seen in the land of the living. See, here's the thing. Too many Christians, I conclude with this, too many Christians believe with all their heart and I think, think with all their heads that they have to die and go to heaven to see all this stuff. So because they believe it and because they think it, they don't speak it. So what happens? So they live life like any other person. They die and go to heaven and they get all this stuff. But God says to them, you know what? It wasn't my desire just for you to be blessed in heaven. Not just for you to be healed in heaven. Not just for you to be joyous in heaven, which we all will be for all eternity. But God, I think, would say to these people, don't you be one of them. But you didn't have to die to get it. I would have been good to you on the earth. I would have given you joy on the earth. I would have given you healing on the earth. I would have given you peace on the earth. I would have given you blessings on the earth. Does this make sense? We can what? We can, we can, we can pull the lever, right, on the promises of God in the here and now as we believe them, think them, and speak them prophetically what? In prayer. In prayer. Is this good today? Do you receive it? I know we went long, but I had to wrap it up. Praise God. So let's pray, all right? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the promises of God that are yes and amen. And Lord, we believe them, we think them, and we speak them by faith over our lives, over our family, over our relationships, over our marriages, our children and grandchildren. Lord, we speak them over our church, and we speak them over America. I decree and I declare today, America is going to see revival. That, that the Holy Spirit is moving across all 50 states even right now, bringing people to the Lord, to salvation, to redemption, to healing and deliverance from all the powers of the enemy. And this we ask and we pray and we believe in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen and amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, hey, if you have a prayer request, the pro tab program in front of you, uh, is there on the back side you can fill out those prayer requests if you're a guest with us we'd love for you to fill out the uh, tab connect card it's perfect at the bottom you just tear that out and put it in the red offering box and we uh, we have a gift for you that we'd like to bless you with and give you as a token of our appreciation of being here today also as you saw in the uh, video announcements Easter 2019 is coming up uh, April 21st April 20th we have a community Easter egg hunt out here from 11 to 12. There'll be some uh, sign-up information next week. Uh, if you, we're also raising money as a special offering for that Easter egg hunt. We want to have some prizes to give away, not just eggs. We're going to be purchasing bicycles, uh, some Kindles, some t uh, wireless headsets for the kids. They love all that stuff, uh, as well as some other prizes. So if you feel led of the Lord to bless the tab, uh, with a special offering above your tithes, just put in the memo on your check, special offering or Easter egg uh, hunt offering, and uh, all of that money will just go right towards buying those prizes. And uh, we're just going to give them, give them away. Uh, there'll be a food truck out here from Pekin, Paco's Tacos is going to be here. It's going to be awesome. I hear it's the best Mexican truck in central Illinois. I can't wait for that. There'll also be some hamburgers and hot dogs also there. And the Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny is going to show up, be walking around, and people get pictures with the Easter Bunny on April 20th, and, and they're going to receive invite cards to come and worship with us on April 21st. We're also mailing out 5,000 mailers with this graphic right here on it, and on the back side, flip side, it'll be inviting people to the egg hunt as well as our Easter worship services. We want the place packed out. Uh, every chair we've got in the building is going to be in here that day. Uh, we're expecting overflow, overflow. So. Uh, invite your friends and family members uh, to come and, and be a part of that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, our next series, beginning, hard to believe, next, next week's April. Well, actually, tomorrow's April. But uh, next week, uh, we're going to be in a series of messages through the month of April entitled, This is Love. This is Love. We're going to talk about the love of God and uh, the why behind what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago on the cross. So looking forward to that series. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, it's been such a blessing uh, having you. Trust you are blessed by the word. Fellowship with one another, love one another, and be blessed. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday at the tab. God bless you. Hi, 
I'm Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the lead pastor at The Tab. And I'm Mindy Farrell. The Tab is now located at 1845 West Hovey Avenue in Normal, Illinois. Here's some things you can expect to experience at The Tab.